Welcome to another Sigma Life Hangout. Today we're discussing with the press attaché of the European Parliament Office in Cyprus, Mrs. Alexandra Talidu, on Hello. the topic of the migrant crisis and how that affects the EU. We are recording this on uh, Thursday, right after the uh, vote on exactly the new plan on tackling the migrant crisis. What was the result? It's the relocation. We're talking about the relocation of 120 thousand people from Italy, Greece and Hungary who are now experiencing the pressure of uh, the migration. As you know, every night you see hundreds of and thousands of people reaching the borders trying to move towards the more, let's say, rich countries of Europe, mm -hmm. but also at the countries that they have better uh, receiving conditions. Mm -hmm. So today the members of the European Parliament voted in a very express procedure, I have to say, after the suggestion of the President of the European Parliament and they voted in favour of the relocation of 120,000 people. Unfortunately, the Home, the Home Affairs Council did not really come to a decision mm -hmm. at the last meeting. We are expecting a new council on the 22nd, and the parliament is sending a very strong signal that uh, solidarity is needed, concerted action is needed, if Europe is going to face the migration crisis and is going also to retain its values, the values on which the European Union is based. The EMPs are definitely raising their voice towards that direction and that is very clear to everyone watching the European affairs and following the development of the crisis. However, the member states and the governments of the member states seem to be less, let's say, receiving of the actions that need to be taken in order to relieve the countries that have taken the greatest way of receiving the, the refugees, notably from Syria. How yes. would you comment on that? Um, first of all, we have to say that this is uh, not a regular situation. There is a war and there are millions of peoples that are displaced. And according to the UN Geneva Convention, when somebody is in danger and they are fleeing from a war zone, the countries, I'm not talking only about Europe, mm -hmm. but we have international responsibility, the countries should open the borders to these people because they are refugees mm -hmm. and they are seeking asylum. And uh, by law, by international law, all the European countries, uh, they have to provide assistance to the people. The second thing is that these people, they embark on very dangerous, yeah. Uh, uh, trips We've seen hundreds on, and hundreds exactly uh, up to July we have more than 2,000 people dead in the mm -hmm. Mediterranean Sea which is something that we cannot sit and mm -hmm. watch we are talking about human lives lost and again there are international conventions that say all countries have a responsibility to save people at risk in mm -hmm. the sea so the European Union it's not a fortress, it's a union that has signed international conventions. So the European Parliament at the forefront is demanding that the European Union uh, implements obligations towards these people. Unfortunately, some member countries, and we're seeing now Hungary, mm -hmm. they are trying to build walls to block these people. Mm -hmm. There is, of course, a responsibility by Europe to protect its outer frontiers and we are talking about the Frontex agreement mm -hmm. but that is against irregular um, uh, immigration it's uh, f against uh, illegal immigration but then now the we are talking about refugees and when it's refugees you have no right to build a fence or a wall that will stop the refugees to move freely in the European Union and that brings it to my next point we we hear more often than not of the migrant crisis, where in fact it's a refugee crisis. Exactly. How and when do we make the distinction between the two? Because you, you said about the refugees and how we are supposed to take them in and we were obliged to see the, the, um, the crisis in a humanitarian way. But then some countries like Hungary, and we've seen others as well, they don't talk of refugee crisis, but no. migrant crisis, where yes. in fact we're talking about the same people that are fleeing from uh, Syria. Yes, the, uh, the, the thing with, uh, with the Hungarian response is that they use a terminology that will excuse 
the methods they use. Because if you say a migrant and you don't say a refugee mm -hmm. or somebody who needs uh, the ref refugees, they are people who need international protection. So they come into the European Union. The first thing that they do is that they ask for asylum. As long as their place of origin is in a situation that endangers their life, the European countries are obliged to shelter them and to give them the opportunity to live safely. This is international agreements. It's not only about the European Union. So we are talking about a refugee crisis. We are not talking about a migration, a, a economic uh, migrants. Maybe some people between all of these thousands and hundreds of thousands, some of them are economic migrants, but you cannot block everybody mm -hmm. on the excuse that there are economic migrants in these high, uh, thousands of people. In Syria, more than three million people are displaced. One uh, million class in Lebanon, one mm -hmm. million class yeah. in Turkey, one million in, the, in Syria. These people, they don't have the means to live. They don't have the means to educate their children. They lost their houses. They lost their homes. Their villages were destroyed. ISIS is threatening the life mm -hmm. of everybody. We cannot stand by as civilized countries and leave these people to die either in the Mediterranean trying to reach a safe heaven or to, um, to, 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 to oblige them to stay in concentration camps or refugee camps with no hope for them. Europe is five million people. I will tell you some figures. Uh, in 2013, 431 people were granted asylum in the European, uh, uh, sorry, we had applications, mm -hmm. 431. In uh, 2014, 626. Up to now, July, in, in July, we have 417,000 people who ask for our asylum in the European Union. So by the end of the year, if there is 150% increase in the second half, we're going to have more than 8,000 um, 8, 800, people. But we're, we're not supposed to look at numbers, but at people. Yes. I know that numbers have their, their significance, but correct me if I'm wrong, to my understanding, we need to take in all these people, put them in uh, reception camps, see who is who, what they need, and then act accordingly, not block them out. Exactly. You are talking about the common asylum uh, regulation that, uh, regulations that were adopted by the European Union mm -hmm. in 2013, and they were implemented. They came into implementation in July 2015. Mm -hmm. And they say about the protection, First of all, is uh, in, in order to understand, it is uh, the qualification directive sets out the rules on which we qualify these people as refugees and asylum seekers, and they, mm -hmm. they are granted international protection. Then we have the asylum procedure directive, which gives guidelines as to what procedures to follow mm -hmm. when you deal with asylum seekers. Then we have the reception conditions directive mm -hmm. because there are certain conditions. These people, they need to have access to legal support, to medical support, education for the children, protection. These people are not criminals. They mm -hmm. are people fleeing from, from war. And then we have the Dublin regulation. That is creating a lot of problems because the Dublin regulation specifies that uh, this procedure on how to, en to, to, take the, uh, to receive the asylum seekers and to examine their application, it's done in the country of entry. So let's say that in Cyprus, there is an entry of one million refugees. The Dublin regulation provides that the examination of their papers should be made in Cyprus. But this is in conditions that are normal. Now we have uh, conditions that are really abnormal. There, there are conditions that trigger other things. First of all, when a country cannot absorb the impact of the asylum seekers, then uh, and the refugees leave for another countries, then they have no right to return it to a country that has not the capacity or the resources to handle this. Mm -hmm. So that is why Germany accepted that the Dublin uh, regulation is not 
enforced anymore because they understand that Greece in the situation yeah. it is today with the economic crisis, with so much unemployment, it cannot handle alone this, uh, this uh, refugee not, crisis. Yeah. So they open the borders. Of course, the opening of the borders creates, a, let's say, a, a wave of refugees leaving Greece and Italy, Italy and the other countries, and they want to go to Germany and Sweden and the other northern countries because there they think that they have a better chance of starting again because these countries, they have growth, they have jobs. Mm -hmm. That is the reason. But there is another directive also, which is called the Quatac Directive. It's about fingerprints that the countries of the European Union, when somebody comes in the European Union demanding asylum, they take the fin fingerprints so they can uh, have information about the person. All of the countries have access to that. In case of criminals, they can trace mm. them. There are um, a lot of laws that can help the countries uh, to maintain uh, law and order in their countries. So those who say that they're not really refugees, but ISIS agents, and they're trying to come in the country, that can be controlled, let's say, in some way with yes. the fingerprint. Of course. Mm -hmm. This can be controlled. There are a lot of people that they don't have papers. The people who don't have papers, you have to examine their origins. Mm -hmm. That is another procedure. But when the people come and they have papers, you must have information by Interpol, by other, uh, other sources, mm -hmm. if these people are criminal or if they have a criminal past. But if they are Syrians, and we are talking about Syrians, in this case, and they demand asylum, you have to examine it under the asylum directive. You cannot treat these people as ISIS or uh, economic uh, migrants or any other category of illegal immigration. Um, in the broader sense, let, let's take a step backwards. Europe has been created after two world war, wars that it, it needed to serve the purpose of solidari solidarity and people coming together, being so interwoven between them in all spectrums of life, as so that we wouldn't have, again, any wars, any troubles. Now we have an extreme situation, a crisis, where somewhere, somewhere else they're dealing with the same thing. Wouldn't be this the time for Europe to prove that it's true to its origins so many years after its creation. For some analysts, the migrant crisis, the refugee crisis, might be the start of fatal blows to many aspects of the EU. Of course. When you have the president of the European Parliament, after his meeting with Orban, saying that this is not a European Stands and we need a European solution because this is a European problem. They, they had a very difficult meeting, I have to say, the, the Prime Minister of Hungary and the President of the European Parliament because the President of the European Parliament supports a European solution, solidarity, sharing of the burden by all countries and definitely showing what Europe stands for. It stands for values mm -hmm. and it has to assist people at peril in the sea or people who need international protection. To quote again another leader of the European Union, Jean-Claude Juncker, the president of the Commission, he talked to the European Parliament at the State of the Union in front of uh, all the members of the Parliament at the plenary session and he said, this Union, this European Union more, uh, needs more Europe and more Union. Mm -hmm. So we have to unite together and see what is the problem. And it is unacceptable by some countries that they profit from European, the European budget, the European funds, that they don't want to share when we have a problem that is common. That is something that is unacceptable in mm -hmm. Europe. And as you know, France and Germany, they are, to say a word, they are furious with the stand yeah. of some of the countries, especially of the Eastern Bloc, that they were so much help so much solidarity was shown by the rest of the members and so many people of those countries seek refuge mm -hmm. at the European Union before they before became they members. Became. And now they are showing a face that is not the face of compassion, it's not the face of understanding the peril of these people. So when Juncker and when Schulz join forces and they call on the leaders of the European Union to stand 
united and face this crisis is a cacophony when you hear. And the worst thing of all is Schengen is at, is at the heart of the European mm -hmm. uh, project. If Schengen is in danger, which seems which, which seems to be it in is, danger, it is in danger. If countries start to close their uh, borders and they establish border controls, then who is going to say to another country that okay, you establish border controls, then I, I establish financial controls. I won't mm -hmm. allow any funds to leave my country for another country. Y then you stop the free movement of people, goods, capital, and all of these things. That then you strip the EU the of its base. Exactly. Thank you so very much for your time. We all hope that EU doesn't let us down as European citizens and as world citizens as well, because this is a humanitarian crisis first and foremost. The EU institutions are doing their job. It's about time that the European member state leaders, they do their bit as well, so that Europe uh, is the is God, 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 God is expected by people, a heaven, a place of human rights. Thank you so very much for your time and thank you for watching.